Hey, we're back. This is John. Hey, it's Paul. And it's Eric. Yeah, it's What If Geeks. And we're here with Mandalorian Chapter 13. Review. Uh, yay. Holy shit. <laughs> this one's called The Jedi. Yeah, I wonder why. Yeah. Um, dude, they're, they're like not even hold anything back. Like, they're not trying to hide it no more. They're like, we know what we got. Watch that. Just sit back and enjoy the ride. There are a lot of things to talk about in this before we even get into the actual episode. I mean, one, uh, Filoni was allowed to both write and direct this episode. So he's directed two so far, but they weren't written by him. This one is both. And I think there's a reason for that. And that's because of Ahsoka Tano, which is a character he created uh, yep. for Clone Wars series. Um, so I don't think anybody knows this better than him, but there's something even cooler about this episode. So back in season one, episode four. Well, can we, we put a pin in it a second? Yeah, sure. Something that we forgot last. Uh, oh last yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we did forget to mention one little hiccup in the last episode, was, uh, the siege, uh, right in the middle of the siege, you can see, uh, and well, we're not doing video anymore, so I don't know why I'm putting up backgrounds, but <laughs> but I like them. Uh, in the background of one of the scenes where uh, Karga, Dune, and Mando are all getting ready to fight, or in the middle of a fight, is clearly one of the stage guys halfway behind a wall. One yeah. of the walls that we lose. One of the bulkhead to. walls we talked about. Yeah, yeah, one of the bulkhead walls we talked about. And all you can see is half of them uh, so you can't even see his face you just see half of them like part of a shirt and arm and blue jeans and he quickly became you know half blue jeans guy uh the internet went nuts with this admiral jeff blue jeans he had a wikipedia entry for like two hours until somebody pulled it down <laughs> yeah, so they pulled it down yeah. i even saw somebody um memed and i sent it to you guys uh, an action figure of yeah. like it's half a yeah. wall. And Blue jeans a- guy. <laughs> it was ridiculous. So of course, you know, they they uh they edited him out immediately. Eric, you found that out. Yeah, I rewatched the episode with my oldest kid uh on I think it was Saturday, right right after it released, and he's not in there anymore. They cut it out. They like digitally edited him out. Yeah. Yeah. It was that quick. So Unlike the Starbucks cup in uh, Game of Thrones, which will apparently be staying there. I don't know. Uh, Mandalorian's like, no, nope, we're not having none of that shit. We'll, uh, we'll fix this real quick. But uh, yeah, so Blue Jeans guy lived for all of a day and a half, maybe. And he's gone. So, okay. So back to our current episode, The Jedi. Yeah, so Filoni wrote and directed significant here because of Ahsoka Tano. Uh, We get to see Ahsoka Tano for the first time in this episode. We'll get to that. Um, There is, I mean, so back in, I think it was episode four of season one, chapter four, where he defends the planet, uh, that random planet, that random village on a random planet. Um, And it was definitely like sort of a seven samurai throwback thing. This episode, like even harder, embraces the uh, uh, Akira, uh, Akira Kurosawa. Kurosawa. Thank you, uh, the Kurosawa vibes, and it's like total Yojimbo with the showdown, the Japanese garden, like everything about this. The, the walled fortress. Uh, there's so many throwbacks to sort of Kurosawa uh, imagery and theming in this that it's crazy. Uh, yeah. But it all works. It all works. The way they did it is great, I think. It works really well. And like, and, and another thing I really appreciate about this series is, for the most part, like, they don't... If you're expecting something, you know, you, you almost expect, like, a, a Luke Skywalker at the end of Force Awakens on the top of the mountain kind of thing. Like, a, a very tail end of an episode, you're going to see something. They don't do that in here. They like, I mean, right up front, they give you exactly what you want, and they give you a Sokotano quick. I, I think the episode starts with that, right? Uh, yeah, it what? starts. It starts on this. So uh, attacking the, the yeah. guards or whatever they are. Yeah, but... yeah, because it starts out with the fortress, and then the guards on the outside, 
Mm-hmm. And then you start to see the white lightsabers, which was a really cool effect. One, uh, I was worried with it not being, I shouldn't have been because it's Lucasfilm and it's Disney. They're dumping all the money into this thing. They got nothing else to put the money on. Uh, I was wondering how good the lightsabers were going to look. They look fine. They look great. But the effect of her going in and out of the fog mm-hmm. was amazing. Like, just like like a ninja. like She'd come in, attack somebody, and disappear under the fog again. And she keeps sh- turning on and turning off the lightsabers just for the attack and then shutting them back down and running again. It was a really cool effect. It definitely was. And this uh, this is a forest planet, but at least around this base anyway, it's wrecked, which is a theme we saw, I think, in episode nine. When we were getting a little bit of Kylo Ren's backstory, there was like a forest that was totally devastated. And yeah, not that that has any relevance. I just, they borrow so much theming from different things. It's, it's kind of amazing. Everything's like a tiny Easter egg. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you get you get Ahsoka Tano right off the bat, and um, she's talking to this magistrate. She kills all the guards. She's talking to this magistrate at the gate. Um, the magistrate is wielding a spear, which will become significant, and it is another cool Kurosawa throwback between you know a dual sword fight and a, a staff. Uh, but anyway, that, not yet. So um, yeah. I mean, she basically Ahsoka gives her an ultimatum. Because uh, because the magistrate says like you know well we're gonna we're just gonna kill everybody that you care about here and it's gonna be your fault and yeah she's like Soka wants information from her and she's like how much is yeah. it worth to you she's like you're gonna I'm tell me what I want to know you have 24 hours <laughs> yeah and, then, and uh, so and then our guy yeah. Mando flies in um, he they find the planet uh, he is. In there with the the child, uh, and he's he's he says, "I you know we're gonna start landing. Get your seat." And uh, Baby Yoda goes back, gets in a seat, but he wants the little ball on top of the shifter knob, right? And man is like, "No!" And, and yeah. so he just he now he's just taking stuff. He's like, "I don't care what you have to say." So he's a little uh, force uh, power. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Um. So they land, uh, the Razor Crest lands uh, in the woods with the giant, whatever those things are. You know what those yeah, things are? I don't are? know what the hell they Animal are. Animal things? Oh, anyway. I don't know what those are, no. Anyway, <laughs> Giraffe things. Walks up, yeah. He walks up, to the, uh, walks up to the gate of the fortress and um, the uh, head guy, gun, I don't know, gun, is he named the... Number two no, guy, the um, mercenary. Oh, but I know his Madison. name. It's uh something Reed. He played uh, Kyle Reese in Terminator. Okay, and uh, he he's been around a long time. He like he's very famous. Got it. But yeah, that's him. Yeah, uh, he asked Mando what's going on, and he's, he says, "I'm tracking a bounty. Can I come in?" Um, so they let him in, and. Uh, he takes the kid with him. He's got him in a pouch. Yeah. And uh, a satchel. Indiana Jones wears one. Yeah. Walks through. Walks through town and starts asking some people some information. And they cower. And then the uh, the same guys, sort of the I don't know, doom magistrates like, guards. Magistrates guards. They look like they're wearing gas masks that are connected with an air hose, some breathing apparatus. Yeah, I thought they were droids at first. But. So, listen, I, I, I want to stop for one second and ask you guys something. Uh, I'm a big Dune fan. I'm sure you know that Dune series is coming out in like two or three weeks, I think. Um, but uh, you, you mentioned the guy with the mask, right? But this is on this is in the city of Caladan, right? On the planet Corvus. Um, Caladan is a reference. It's the home of House Atreides in Dune. Right. And and oh. Corvus, Corvus, there was also a planet in Dune called Alpha Corvus. Well, I don't know if those are like nerd references or that's just random luck, but it seems like too much to be random. Too, too yeah, much I'm to be random. sure, yeah. <laughs> this, is, yeah this is way nerd deep. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, no, no, no. But yeah, yeah. I, it is. It's, it's just this is the kind of nerd level shit they do. 
Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not spelled the same, but it sounds the same. Yeah. It just seemed. I don't know. It just seemed like, oh, is that supposed to be there? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna start playing around with alternate realities now. All right. <laughs> No, I do also, I wanted to mention, I, I love the fact that Mando always, because you see like he doesn't trust anybody, every time he lands on a planet, he always leaves the ship a good ways away from wherever he's going, and then goes to, yeah. he goes on foot, yeah. so that, you know, they, they don't see his ship right away. We got another subtle New Hope reference, too, I uh, just... You, you already went past this part, but when he flies into Caladan for the first time, the guy on the the, the uh, guard or whatever on the wall has a little binos and he's like watching the ship go by. That exact thing happens um, in A New Hope on Yavin, Yavin 4, when, yeah. when the Millennium Falcon comes in. Yep. It's like the same shot with just dirtier background because the trees are all burnt down. And But it's a forest <laughs> planet. It's another, you know, it's another original yeah. Julia reference. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. No, that's cool. Um, so uh, then the, those the guards show up and say the magistrate wants a word with you. Um, Mando goes, uh, follows the guards to the magistrate, and you see the guy that she, the magistrate initially had when she's talking to Ahsoka Tano, um, standing there that I thought she was going to kill, by the way, in that conversation. Yeah. They're now standing in these, I don't know, it's almost like they're they're being. It's a little like in in Gladiator when you see people crucified, um, but they're standing there in these in these things that are just barely bigger than themselves. And anytime they seem to touch one of the sides, they get shocked. Yeah, um, yep. and they're just positioned in the in the lead up to where the magistrate is in her sort of inner garden. Yeah, it's definitely a, like a callback to any kind of movie or novel you've read where people like. People are put on spiked or yeah, yeah. A, ru- a ruler had heads on pikes and that yeah. kind of shit. Is it's that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, one one other thing I wanted to mention too, because it'll come into play later, is the first guy that Mando tries to talk to. The only thing he says is, "Please don't talk to them. Don't talk to any of us. It'll be bad for us." Mm-hmm. Initially, like, immediately they set up. This is not good for these people, you know. Oh, and and I, the magistrate going back a scene. The magistrate. When uh, Sotano asks the magistrate, for the, where is he? And you're not sure who she's talking about. You're going to give me the information I want. She says, um, you're going to cost these people their lives. She's like, I don't care about these people. Um, is it worth one, ten, a hundred? Right. Um, so you can tell that she she gives zero shits about their lives. Yeah. Um, they mean nothing to her. Um, so Mando... I mean, it goes into her uh, her inner sanctum, and uh, she calls one of the droids over, and they start talking. And she says, um, "I need some. I need. I need you to do something. Um, there's a Jedi out there. I need you to take care of. Her. I need you to kill the Jedi, um, yeah. and I'll give you. I'll give you that." And he's like, "My price is pretty high." Um, and she goes, well, I'll give you this. And she hands him the spear. And it's this really long spear made of solid Beskar. Yeah. Um, and he he holds it, and then he tests it by clanking it on one of his gauntlets. And that's how he can tell. Yeah, and, and she calls up the uh, the history of the Mandalorians. Right, and, and she says, you, right, the, the long struggle between Jedi and Mandalore, and, and you should want to go do this. And he's like, I don't have a problem with it. It's just going to cost you. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Mando sets out. Um, oh, oh, there's a there's an Easter egg there too. By the way, you mentioned the droids, those assassin droids we've seen before. Those are HK forty seven assassin droids. They're actually protocol droids that have been modified to be assassin droids. Huh. I missed that one. Cool. I did too. Um, Mando heads out. Uh, on his way out, the uh, the. What'd you say his name was? The, the sort of the head gunslinger guy. Uh, oh, I don't looks, know his name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looks looks down. He's, John said the actor. Thought he knew the actor's name. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I forget his first name. Reed, like Mike, not Mike Reed, but it's something, yeah. something Reed. Anyway, he, that guy. Yeah, yeah, that guy. <laughs> um, he uh, he looks down and sees uh, the child in the satchel. He's like, "What's that?" He's like, "I keep it around for luck." Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so, so Mando heads out, he gets into the woods and um, comes across Sokotano and meets her at, you know, sort of the tip of her lightsaber. Um, they have a brief, they start to have a brief fight um, and then he calls her name and says, Bo-Katan sent me. Yeah, well, now and the fight scene itself was cool because you see the Beskar armor, which is something also the internet had a problem with. Apparently, was the Beskar armor was easily able to block lightsabers or whatever. But uh, all right, I get it. You know, they're showing the lightsabers not as uh, what do you call it, all powerful as you think it is, right? Uh, there are things that can block it. Uh, but the people that are questioning it, uh, you, you go back to like episode one when uh, Qui Gon and Obi Wan took out a door with it. It took them a minute to get through it, you know. And then on the flip side of that too, go back to the history of the Mandalorians and the Jedi. Wouldn't it make sense that a Mandalorian comes up with armor that can block a lightsaber? Yeah, I mean, we certainly haven't seen it in anything canon, but I, I guess it makes sense. It makes sense that, I mean, the Mandalorians were the only people that really stood up to groups of Jedi without being fucking slaughtered. Yeah. So we don't know uh, exactly how that worked. I mean, they came up with things like physical bullets instead of blaster rounds that were part of their success. But it's yeah. plausible that their armor could block, at least momentarily block. Yeah. And like, right. so, like, yeah. And that was, was my other point was, you know, you're not seeing it like, held against it for long you know he's just blocking shots yeah he's blocking a few shots here and there it's holding up but the scene itself is freaking cool yeah yeah you know to to see the two of them duking it out for a second but then yeah he says you know ahsoka tano i'm not here to fight you bogatan sent me and she stops and then she looks did you catch how quick she looks past him Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. she's, I her, hope it's her, about her that guy. Dart, right? Yeah, yeah. Her eyes dart to the side, and she's like, "I hope it's about him." Yeah. And then you see Baby Yoda or Yoda Lorian, or we're about to find out. Yeah. We're about to never have to say Baby Yoda again. Yeah. I'm still saying it. I don't care. I'm still saying it. <laughs> um, so, uh, so he takes Baby Yoda out of the satchel and and sits him on the rock, and then the two of them start to, I don't know, commune. Uh, not exactly telepathic, but sort of. Um, and and Mando's sort of pacing, trying to figure yeah. out like what's going on here. And uh, they have this this nice talk, I guess. And, uh, <laughs> and he, well, I mean, I guess it makes sense because you figure like it's maybe it's just a, a natural progression from like when Luke was hanging off of the thing in Bespin and he called out to Leia. It's essentially like a telepathy kind of thing, and I'm sure there's more examples of it, but it's something in between telepathy and the communication with the Force ghosts. You know, yeah. I'm sure you can communicate through the Force the way they were. Yeah, if you're both Force sensitive, then yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, um, and so and the way that Kylo and and Ray can talk sort of across not even being in the same place, but have right conversations where they can actually touch each other. Yeah, let's force, get force Skype. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> a force tech. I mean, Force Skype premium. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of them uh, offering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one of them. I think you're on mute. <laughs> um, and so she uh, she starts to go into a little bit of, of Baby Yoda's past and, and goes through the, you know, starts to tell his story. And then she names him. Well, and he names himself through the telepathy. Yeah, through the telepathy. <laughs> yeah. But we hear it. We hear yeah. it from her, from her she voice. She tells Mando, because he says, you know, the kid, whatever. Yeah. And she says, Groku. Right. Gro- Grogu. 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 Now, don't mix it up now. You're going to say Goku. You're going to turn him into a I Japan anime character. Don't do <laughs> He's going to go Super Saiyan on us. Yeah. yeah. And she says his name is Grogu. And I'm like, 
<laughs> so I kind of I kind of hated the name. Actually, I still do hate the name. I think. Uh, yeah, it's not my favorite, but at the same time, I'm also like I'm of the mindset that no matter what they name this kid, that's the thing. It wasn't going to be. Good. I wasn't going to like it. Yeah. Yeah. I just so far, my only my only wish is they they would have done a Y name. They had a Yodel. They had a Yaddle. Just do a Y name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yoda. Did you just name him Yodel? <laughs> no, Yoda, Yaddle. Uh, that's oh, I, th- I, I thought you said Yodel. It could be, it could be Yogu. Yeah. <laughs> you yogurt the wise? Yes. The powerful? No, no. Exactly. It's yogurt. <laughs> um, so now the question becomes, are they going to rebrand all of the stuff? I don't know. There's been a million memes since Friday when this thing came out about you know, there's a there's one of this cargo ship full, late, you know, laden with containers of, and they're like, this is the Disney branded Grogu stuff on its way to stores. Oh yeah, uh, Grogu and what we think of the name. Um, but yeah, to John's point, they, I don't I don't know what they would have named him that that I would have liked, um, but this one is, and and I'm still gonna call him Baby Yoda. So there's that. I was just named him Yodalorian. I love the Yodelorian thing. Uh, <laughs> you, you coined the phrase there, dude. Yeah, I agree. Um, she mentions, though, that uh, Ahsoka Tano mentions that um, he was on his way to being tra- he was he was at a Jedi temple. Yeah, he was at the Jedi training. temple on Coruscant. Uh, yep. It's definitely an Easter egg there. Um, and uh, and then he goes into hiding. He goes into hiding, presumably after Order after 66. Right. Happened. That's, and so, that's yeah. And so it, she doesn't say that outright, but it seems like that's what it was. He had to go into hiding because of his powers and whatever. Or is it when. Well, uh, yeah, which would make sense, but. Because I've seen this on, on the internet after this episode. It was like, yeah, I want to talk about, like. You know, well, so let me, <laughs> let me just put it this way <clears throat> The Jedi Temple on Coruscant is where Jedi were trained until Order 66. Before that, they were totally safe there. So when she says he had to go into hiding because of his powers, like there really isn't another answer if he was at the Jedi Temple. Right. Right. Yeah, because that's been all over the internet too about like, you know, how how could, you know, how did Anakin possibly miss him or whatever? Right. And it's also been another point of contention for how Baby Yoda's the bad guy, right? Like a bad guy, not the bad guy, but like, oh, he's committed genocide now. He steals uh, macarons uh, and he abandoned all of the other four sensitive children in the temple in Order 66 and ran off and died. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Why do you hate this kid so much? <laughs> he can't even say anything but cool. <laughs> they really do hate him. Which is funny because a year ago, the internet was ablaze with how many people loved him and how quick one season turns them against them. I don't know. So, all right. Yeah. So, anyway, so, yeah, so she says how he uh, he had to escape out of the air by hiding his power. And that's where his mind kind of goes dark. Um, and he's basically been in hiding ever since. Yeah. Yep, and so uh, she she specifically says he spent decades hiding, which is another likely reference to Order sixty six because that would have been twenty eight years ago at this point in the timeline, give or take. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, oh, and then and so she so she goes to um, she's going to give him a, a little some sort of Jedi test, right? So holds out a stone. She sort of force pushes it gently into his hand. He catches it. Um, and then she says, all right, buddy, uh, take a stone out of my hand. And he looks disinterested. He puts his hand up for a second, but doesn't do the whole thing. Send where he, it back. Yeah. Right. right. He doesn't do the thing where, um, even where he closes his eyes and holds his hands up, he sort of gives it a half-hearted effort and then just quits. Yeah. Um, and she said, and... He just drops it on the ground, right? Yeah. yeah. And then says... Um, she says, you've got a strong connection with him. Why don't you try it to Mando? Yeah. So Mando grabs a rock. All right, kid, take the rock. Um, he sort of doesn't want to. And then it dawns on Mando, what if I use something he likes? So he takes out the shifter knob and says, hey, hey, kid, you want this? And she's every time he calls him kid, she goes, Grogu. Grogu. 
Call him by his name. They're his really name. trying to. Yeah. But but I did like the fact that every time Mando does say his name, the kid goes, eh? Yeah, he does look. He's like, huh? Huh? Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, and so that is what gets him. He cares enough about Mando and loves that little thing that he's able to, to pull it and write it. Quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So it shoots into his hand. I saw uh, I saw some references on a, a Reddit or something about uh, this test being a, a callback to Lone Wolf and Cub because there's a point where um, Ogami tells the kid you have to choose between the stone and the sword and if you choose the sword I'll train you in the way of the, of the uh, samurai and if you don't he's going to kill him. Although that's not what happens here, but she gives him the choice. Well, she gives him the the, the stone, right? And then Mando pulls out the shiny silver ball and that's more where his interest is at. And then she says, I can't train him. I just, I just read a thing and said like, that may be a throwback reference to Lone Wolf and Cub. It could be, but it's probably a little vague. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a stretch, but given all the other uh, (laughs) references in here. Oh yeah, no, given all the references, I I totally get it. But like, again, the internet loves to like read every little tiny detail into everything and like everything means something true it could just be that he's a baby and that's something he likes <laughs> well know? i mean we've talked about lone wolf and cub references before in this show yeah. though yeah. so and it's, I mean, it's certainly not about. lost certainly yeah. not lost yeah. on lucasfilm yeah the whole thing is a sort of a lone wolf and cub yeah it is yeah i think i yeah i think i said that like the first season yeah. <clears throat> Um, so they do the training sequence, and she, so Tano mentions how much sort of fear is in his mind, um, but she does have a strong attachment to Mando. Um, and then, I, well, yeah, I, I mean, know. fear is understandable. I just watched like everybody I knew get slaughtered. Right. And then, <laughs> so, and uh, I don't know if there's another scene before um, Mando and Mando says, "Hey, look, they sent me out here to kill you." Um, I didn't agree to it, but that's what happened. Yeah, I think I it's right about here. And he strikes a new deal with her. He's like, I'll help you take these yeah. fuckers out. You know, you, you need to, to take this kid. kid and train him. Yeah, you promise. Yeah. And, I, and I, I love how like he doesn't break his own code because he says, I didn't agree to anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like he's pretty slick. Yeah. The, the attention to detail there is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, so he, and she says it's almost impossible. And then he says, "A Jedi and a Mandalorian—they'll never see it coming." Yeah. Which um, pretty much gave me all the nerd giggles. You yeah. know? <laughs> she also makes an Anakin Skywalker reference in this. She says um, oh. about the attachment that the kid has with Mando. Like I've seen what this can yeah. do to a fully trained Jedi Knight. It is one hundred percent Anakin Skywalker. Skywalker yeah, reference, sure. yeah, for sure. Yeah, because we're going back into Clone Wars. I don't know if you want to hold some of that for after we talk about the whole episode or get into it now. Because you had like she, all right. So she's Anakin's Padawan, right? And she got a close bond with him. And there are scenes from Clone Wars into Rebels where she actually fights Vader. And realizes it's Anakin. So, so she's seen how bad this can go. So she wants nothing to do with it. Right. So I, never mind. I guess I just took away my own question. We're just going to talk about that. <laughs> so, so then you go. So then you go back to um, the gate of the uh, the fortress, the, the city, I guess, and. Um, she jumps the Sokotano jumps the wall, attacks the guards on on top, um, slices through that giant bell that they've got, and um, starts taking them on. And the assassin droids, the gunfighter guy, uh, all scramble. Um, she's doing a lot of bullet deflecting with lightsabers. Jumps down, um, sort of all out fight through the town, and then um, Mando comes in sort of after she takes them, they're, they're following her. Um, she's jumping rooftop to rooftop, sort of. Um, Mando comes in and um, starts helping in that fight. And 
ends up taking out a couple of the droids. Um, and uh, she is, she takes out most of the assassin droids um, and ends up in the inner sanctum with the magistrate. Yeah, the fucking Japanese Zen garden. Yeah. Where they're fighting on like a walkway. <laughs> yeah, there's a well, walkway, the pond, pond on either side. Um, it was really cool scene too because the magistrate is just standing there and when uh, first when Mando is on the outside when they have that whole interaction then the camera kind of pans back and you see her standing on the uh, I guess the wall right and it, that's when you know um, Kyle Reese uh, <laughs> realizes that the two of them working together and he's like oh fuck <laughs> you know and she flips over the wall and it's it didn't dawn on me initially but once the camera cuts back to the other side of the wall and you got the magistrate sitting there on the again on a, a, a ramp platform thing with you know no railings and pond on either side which always again in Star Wars anytime there's no railings and a long platform something's about to happen She's just standing there, and then, like, she looks up, and then you see Ahsoka Tano standing there by the door. It was a really cool scene. Yeah. It, it was cool looking. And there's a there's a super cool juxtaposition here that's, like, uh, sort of throwing back to George Lucas and inspirations, because you get to see the Japanese uh, garden fight, uh, the Zen garden fight that's going on with the, with the two swords versus the staff, right? sort of like really cool martial artist film thing and it keeps cutting back to the old western showdown of mando against the other guy where it's just like uh nobody's got their hand on their weapon yet they're talking they're distanced apart and what's really cool about all that is that the old westerns and the spaghetti westerns in particular are super influenced by japanese samurai films like they take all kinds of borrowing from them so it's almost like you're going like Hey, 19, 1930. Hey, 1960. It's just like they're like yeah. bouncing back and forth between these genres that influenced each other. But at the same time, it's in a Star Wars setting and it's got like a really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I you brought it, it up. Awesome. I, was, I was about to bring it up how I loved how they jumped back and forth between the two standoffs. Well, I mean, it's kind of like these are the same thing. These are just the different ways that the they were sort of portrayed, that. right? There's yeah. like, there's two different ways to have a showdown. <laughs> there's Mando standing off of them and one is in a one is in a dirty desert town with the fog and the smoke and whatever it's, it's, it's dirty, like an old grungy, western yeah. grunginess and the other's in like a literal Japanese in garden it's with ponds around them it's, yeah. clean. it's it's like the the walkway is clean the air even seems clean right if, as if that's possible but, but yeah it, everything in there is cleaner and everything on the other side of the wall is dirty yeah, and it's it's really cool how they sort of married those two things up, and they were they were literally bouncing back and forth to show you it's one way, it's the other way. It's actually no different, but it's different. You know, it's like I really like that. It's probably it one of the. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. Even the cool scene where she sort of she's got the cape right on with that little chain, and she sort of just drops it, and then Ahsoka Tano drops her shawl thing. Yeah. Yeah, and when the two of them stand off, then it cuts back to Mando and the I don't know the sheriff, whatever the fuck we're gonna call him, Kyle Reese. Uh, <laughs> when he tells Mando, "All right, so you've thrown in with her," you, you know, like that kind of like he just like he's letting them know, like, "All right, you know, I see what's going on here. What you know, what's the deal? Why? You know, it was just, it was the way they wrote it was really good. I enjoyed it a lot." And then he says something like, we're, we're both guys who do something for a price and yeah. it doesn't seem worth it for either one of us. So, Yeah, like he, he acts like he's just going to walk away. Yeah. Who's, who's going to win, my side or your side? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, say, he literally says that. He's like, your side going to win, my side going to win, whatever. And he's starting to like that shotgun blaster that he's got. He's starting to like lay it down at Mando's feet. Like, I want nothing to do with this. So, you know. I'm going to live another day kind of thing. And it, I, they take their sweet time with that part of it. While he's like, every time they cut back, the two, uh, 
Ahsoka and the magistrate are talking, and then he's just like telling Mando, like, hey, you know, we can just we can walk away from this. That's got nothing to do with us. You know, like you said, we're 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 guys we're guns for hire. Right. We don't need to worry about what's going on in there. This is me and you. Let's just walk away. And he's like, I'm gonna put this down and we're cool. And we cut back, keep cutting back to uh the magistrate and Ahsoka. And Ahsoka's like you're going to tell me what the fuck I want to know. <laughs> and the magistrate fights her with the uh, the spear, which is, again, a really cool scene. Yeah. The fight between the two of them is the really... The fight is great. Like, she, yeah. manages to, she manages to dislodge one of the lightsabers that goes into the pond. I know. Um, I'm not That's... sure why she didn't immediately try to, you know, sort of force grab it back. Bring it back, yeah. That's um, pretty impressive, but also kind of silly for the exact reason you mentioned. Like, okay, come on, guys. Um, and then she manages to to disarm the spear from her hand, um, and then pulls up right to her throat. Yeah, and then we come back to uh, back to the gunfight. The right. gunfight, and See? he backs. Yeah. Uh, Sheriff boy backs up from the shotgun. He puts it down. He backs up like we're good. And Mando's got his hand ready. Yeah, and he's just standing there. And it's one of those. Is it's set up to show you how fast Mando is. Because like in the shotgun versus holstered weapon thing, you knew he had him because he didn't have the shotgun ready. But when he put it down, he reaches behind his back as he's talking to him and whips out a blaster, and Mando takes him out like quick, you know, and he shoots him dead in the street, just like the old west, you know, and he's done. Yep. So we cut back, and we get. Yet another revelation, yeah, or another uh, Easter egg, yeah. And she said, and, and Ahsoka asks, "Where's Grand Admiral Thrawn?" Yes. Which I guess from the the cartoons, the animated series, that when she finally disappeared, she went off in search of him. So that will, you know, I guess we, we'll say that part to the end. So. But yeah, she's looking for Grand Admiral. Grand Admiral Thrawn. Well, it's pretty much just the end. Nice oh, idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's she. Um, so they cut to the uh, the people are sort of rejoicing in the town, and they they put the magistrate cloak on the first guy that Mando talked to talks to in town, who says, "Don't talk to us; it'll be bad." Yeah. Uh, well, that was, was the point I was like making earlier displaced. with him was when. Uh, there's another assassin droid tries to get a jump on Mando, yeah. and he speaks up. The guy that told him, "Don't talk to us." So turn, around, yeah, look out. You, yeah, you can see a few times within that episode where he looks like he wants to do something and mm-hmm. he, he won't, and then he says, "You know, look out behind you." And Mando takes out the assassin droid. So then, yeah, they basically name him the new magistrate, and they're all celebrating. And uh, Ahsoka Tano tells Mando. Go to a temple, and Eric, you're gonna have to help me out here. Yeah, there's some there's some pretty sort of complicated, not complicated, but like very exact. She goes. She tells him to go to Tython. Tython. She tells him to go to the Jedi Temple at Tython. So this is a very much Legends reference uh, from the Dawn of the Jedi comics. Um, so there was a group that existed before the Jedi, which were called the Jedi, uh, basically J E apostrophe D A I I, the Jedi. Right, so those were the original force practitioners, and they were at uh, they, they resided at a temple on Tython, and this was before there was a split between Jedi and Sith. This was before that, when first when people first realized that force sensitivity, force powers existed. So that's the beginning of the Jedi Order was this group who eventually split off into two sects, and one of them became the Jedi Order. And this is all legends material. This is all from comics. Um, so she tells him to go to the temple on Tython, which, like I said, very much legends reference, uh, where the original Jedi came from. And she tells him, uh, to put, uh, Grogu, Yogu, yogurt, baby Yoda, Yoda Lorian onto some sort of platform or something. And he's going to call, uh, maybe call out to a different Jedi or something that will come train him. Yeah, basically, if he calls out to the Jedi, 
and someone answers, they'll train him. Otherwise, his powers will fade away and he'll just be normal again, I guess. It's been 50 years, but you know, whatever. So a um, couple things to talk about here. So uh, Thrawn, well, if, so we're good, that, if we're good with the episode, the episode, that's the end yeah. of the episode pretty much, yeah. 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 So a couple things to talk about here. Thrawn, one, is also a Legends reference. However, this has technically been made canon already. So Thrawn comes from uh, Timothy Zahn's book um which, which was amazing it was one of the uh heir to the empire heir to the empire the empire yep there was a trilogy yep uh, so he he is a chiss chiss is the race imperial grand admiral yeah. um he is a pretty badass dude actually well, which is and, distinct because the empire was all human yes they and so aliens except for him like he, he was one of the few that you would see yeah, and I think even more relevant to point out here is that Timothy Zahn became a, a Star Wars writer like literally 30 years ago. Like that's how old this character is that he came up with. But um, and a few years ago, I don't, I, I don't know exactly what year, but um, in the Rebels cartoon series, he became a villain. So they already did adopt Thrawn into canon in Rebels, which of course Dave Filoni had a huge part in, and that's why it's important that he wrote and directed this episode. That's a big part of it because she said, "I'm trying to find Thrawn." Um, so obviously he's going to have some involvement here. Now we can ask lots of questions about cloning, about the remnants of the Empire, and what does he have to do with this in Nine Aby? Because that's not where Heir to the Empire is set. Um, so, you know, what are all those things? But we also know from Rebels that at the same time, Grand Admiral Thrawn disappears, uh, Ezra Bridger disappears, which was another character created by Dave Filoni, who is a Jedi, and he may be the one to answer the call. Well, I mean, that would be the question. If, if Ahsoka Tano is not going to train him, is it going to be Ezra Bridger? That'll well, show yeah, up. And that would be the question. Uh, there's one of two things that could happen here. Uh, one, one key thing, Thrawn... Are they going to bring him in as another big bad in this series, or are they going to give Ahsoka Tana her own series? I don't, I don't know. I mean, you're, you know, you're already winning with the Mandalorian. According to we got discovered, every character has a series coming. So, <laughs> right, but you've got that. So either a Thrawn could show up in this series, which would be cool, or there'll be a spinoff with Ahsoka Tana. Now you flip it over to the other side. Look, we were just saying, could Ezra Bridger? be the one to answer the call it's either him because in the rebel series there was that one spot and i don't know what planet it was on but he gets to a an area where there are windows that he can see into the past and he pulls ahsoka tana from her fight with darth vader into where he's at and that's definitely like time travel right he pulls her through and she's physically there with him. So there's a, a big tie there. But the other thing that could happen is what I've been saying for a while. At some point, they involve Luke Skywalker. And apparently, there has been some re- uh, revelation on Mark Hamill signing off on them using younger footage of him. Okay. So, but I mean, they also de-aged him in yeah, Last it's, Jedi. It's a possibility. Yeah. We don't know when he went to train the Jedi after Return of the Jedi, right? We don't know like specific year in that timeline where he went to train Kylo Ren and anybody else in that in that temple he created. Um, so we don't yeah, know any well, of that. Like I said, we could go back to my original theory where this Yodelorian wanted to be trained by Luke. And he's off on the other side of the Jedi Temple when Kylo burns everything in the ground and he goes off into hiding again or whatever. I, so you don't see him again after the sequel trilogy? Or at least then? I don't know. But yeah, it, it, so somebody is going to answer that call. And it's just a matter of so who you got your money on. <laughs> yeah, well, so I, I'm going to put my money on Ezra Bridger for, for a couple reasons. One, um, the Rebels... Uh, 
season finale or series finale already happened. There are no more episodes. And in the last episode, Ezra Bridger fights Thrawn. He disappears and Ahsoka Tano is on a mission to find him. And she thinks if she finds Thrawn, she'll find Ezra, her apprentice. So I feel like this is a way for Filoni and given he's the writer and the director, this is a way for him to continue that storyline that he didn't get to continue with Rebels. Yep. Uh, and I would say most of my money would be pulled in with yours on that one. I still think at some point you're going to get a Luke Skywalker reference in here. Somehow they're going to get it in there. Well, you know, uh, Ezra Bridger could I'm... easily have been another Jedi who helped train people at his temple before he yeah. abandoned the forest and went to live on an island. So you don't know. Yeah, it, it's going to come. The other random rumor I've heard which is funny, but it's also, hey, you know, it's one of those, if you don't see a body, they're not truly dead. I've heard the rumor about uh, Mace Windu coming back. Yeah. I, I Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I know. I think that one's like the point zero zero one chance I would give it, but sure. I, so you're saying there's a chance. I'm saying there's a chance. <laughs> I mean, I, I would think it was cool. Anytime you give me Samuel L. Jackson, I'm happy. So <laughs> take that out of context later. <laughs> but yeah, I would bet my money on Ezra for the safe bet. Yeah. Maybe like a, there's a 8% chance it's Luke. But I don't, I don't know if they're going to mention him now or wait until season three. But I, I know he's coming. But the the key with Luke is if the rumor is true that they'll use younger footage, then they're good. If they're going to de-age him, Mark Hamill's getting older, so they're going to have to do something soon. You know? yeah, or, it's also a bigger... It, it seems more complicated to get Mark Hamill than it does well, I also heard to get another, someone to play live action. There's another rumor out there that because they talked about doing any type of anything with like a, a younger Luke in between Jedi and whatever is using Sebastian Stan because he looks a lot like him. And, and I don't, that idea I don't like too much, but they're not doing that. Yeah. He may have similar looks, but he doesn't act anything like him. I mean, think of Winter Soldier. He's nothing like Mark Hamill. He doesn't talk like him. He doesn't act like him at all. No, no mannerisms. Yeah, I, yeah, true. I hate the idea, really. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like Favreau that idea either. Star I'm just throwing much it out. To recast Luke Skywalker. Like, Favreau's too much of a fan to recast mm-hmm. Luke Skywalker. I hope that's true. I really hope that's true. I would agree. I'd, I'd agree. I'm just throwing it out there because that's what I've read. And I want to I want to put all the cards on the table. Put it out there just in case it happens, then you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. By the <laughs> way, the, the, the enforcer's name is Michael Bean, just so we do that oh, before yeah. the Michael Bean. Yeah, because yeah, cool. he was because he was not only Kyle Reese, but also he was in Alien and Predator. Yeah. Uh, he has a long history in He's sort of sci fi franchise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. So yeah, so that was this episode. Uh do we have anything else? I think we covered everything, right? I think so. No, we actually so, probably we probably forgot a lot to be honest, but <laughs> but I think I think we covered the episode anyway. I think in these last two, these last two have been so good, um, and there's only three left, and that's sad on one hand, but but I think they're going to be awesome between these last three, and and there seems to be a lot to cover. Yeah, yeah, the story they're building, they're definitely. They're definitely leaving it like where you can get into season three and whatever, but th- th- there is a lot to cover just to wrap up a season. Yeah, I, I feel like we're without a doubt getting a sort of a blue face chiss thrawn uh, cutaway in the season finale before it turns to black and gives you the last credits. And we still oh. have, I mean, think about still out there, like from from episodes one essentially of this season. We've not gone back to the Boba Fett stuff. Yep. No, right? Yeah. Boba Fett's been completely forgotten about. And, yep. Well, not not by us, but right. I mean, it's yeah. not mentioned. Overall, in the story, he's been forgotten about, which at some point you have to address that because that little tease is not enough. Right. Yeah. 
So who, who the fuck knows where they're going to go with this? They do such a good job of like, even when you know, like, like, all right, the last episode before this one, we talked uh, two episodes ago about, okay, episode four or chapter 11, whatever the hell it was, is going to be directed by uh, Carl Weathers. So we know Grief Cargo is coming back, whatever, right? We talked about that kind of shit. Like, so we know kind of what to expect. And then, like, you you know Ahsoka Tana is coming. But the amount of shit they throw at you when they give it to you, it still blows your doors off. You're like, holy shit. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And like, like, the only complaint I saw about uh, Ahsoka was somebody online said something about her head tails not being long enough. Oh, right. yeah, the, the Leku or whatever. Yeah, I saw a bunch yeah, of complaints yeah. about that. Like, really? Like, like that, yeah, that's it's weird. Complaint? Yeah, I, people complained about the length of them, that uh, they had wrinkles in them, so it made them look like fake props or whatever. It's like, come on, guys. Really? Yeah, really. Uh, one, she's older, and two, how the fuck do you know? Uh, maybe they got cut off. <laughs> 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 Who the fuck Maybe knows? you can get them cut like a hair, like hair. You just get a haircut or whatever. It's fine, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, whatever. Hell, uh, uh, up until uh, seeing her in live action, when I watched the, her in the cartoon, I had no idea if it was hair or not. So because <laughs> I didn't watch a whole lot of the cartoon. So, but yeah. So uh, overall. These episodes are just fucking ridiculous, and I have no idea what we're doing the next three episodes. But it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, it is. All right. Well, if that's it, boys, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. Uh, everybody, you know, you know, still comment down below, subscribe, like, ring a bell. One day when. COVID is done and we uh, kind of get all back to a relaxed atmosphere. We'll go back to video. But uh, for now, just hit us up. Uh, drop us a like on here. Comment and we'll try to follow them. Uh, hit us up at whatifgeeks.com on Facebook. Uh, whatifgeeks at gmail.com Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and anything else you can think of. Send me a snail mail. I won't give you my address, but Send it like you send it to Santa. <laughs> I'm fat enough. <laughs> I'll find it. <laughs> All right. That's it, people. We'll see you for the next episode. Good night, Tony. Good night, Michael Bean. Good night, Akira Forever. Kurosawa. I had a backup today. I was going to say, Michael Bean, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought certainly he won't take Michael Bean. <laughs> No, because it was the opportunity to say forever. But I guess okay. I could say that about Akira Kurosawa, too. Good night, Akira Kurosawa. Forever. Forever. <laughs>